Awesome. Well, it's six o'clock, so we'll go ahead and get started. I know you're expecting to see Andy, a bald head over here. Uh, unfortunately, we had some hiccups getting down here from Texas, so Andy wasn't able to make it, but really grateful after 24 hours of travel to be here in time to chat with you all and experience adopting Bitcoin. My name is John Gordon. I'm here with Crowd Health. I'm head of business development. You can find me on Twitter at the Bitcoin Yogi. Uh, and I'm really excited to be sharing with you Crowd Health. But before I get started, uh, just a little bit about my background and Bitcoin journey. I was actually here last year at Adopting Bitcoin, uh, really on my own accord. Uh, I was still working in the fiat world, managing medical supplies. I was down in Costa Rica and came up and was really inspired by what I heard. And I'd gone down the rabbit hole really of Bitcoin the last couple of years, really after the, once the pandemic hit and later on in, in, into 2021. And I heard Michael speak. I heard so many amazing speakers last year at Adopting Bitcoin just talking about how Bitcoin is going to disrupt so many dif different industries. Right? And it makes sense that we start with finance and we start with energy and mining. And throughout the presentations, my head was spinning. I was saying, there's so many ways that I think Bitcoin can disrupt healthcare. And healthcare is a really broken industry in the US, which I'll get into. And just so fun to be here uh, and see others that I've met. I think Bitcoin also, for me I'm, and my wife, we were nomadic the last couple of years traveling around had an opportunity to go to Ozante and go to Bitcoin Akasi uh, in South Africa earlier this year and seeing them here and orange pilling along the way and getting a sense of individuals' experiences with money. And I think we're privileged and in the West and people don't think, they just assume the dollar will always be there, but really all of our industries are being run on fiat and fiat incentives and high time preference. So I wanna chat with you today about, briefly about our broken US healthcare industry how we're decentralizing healthcare at Crowd Health, and what healthcare could look like on a Bitcoin standard. So healthcare is crushing most Americans. Insurance prices are through the roof. Just to be covered, it's almost $8,000 a year for an individual, $22,000 a year for a family. One in three Americans has medical debt. This is hurting a lot of families, including 250,000 families that have health insurance go bankrupt every year due to medical bills. Half of the country actually gets their health insurance from their employer. So this was a remnant of World War II, wage freezes, and employers offering an additional benefit in the US. And it's very difficult as an individual to navigate the healthcare system, and you have a lack of continuity, really, with the rise of the gig economy and entrepreneurs building businesses, especially in, you know, in the Bitcoin space and leaving the fiat job and having to think about, oh, how am I gonna have health insurance? How am I gonna get covered? And how do we compare globally? I've studied health systems across the world, compared them to the US, and know that our way isn't the only way. Um, and we're spending two to three times more than any other country, you know, $12,000 per capita annually, and $4 trillion a year in spend. So it's 20% of the economy. A quarter of that is admin. So much of that is waste. And you see from different uh, medical really from a health outcome perspective, keeps getting worse, right? Life expectancy down two years, 40% obese, right? Six in 10 of a chronic condition. And you really look deeper and the incentives of healthcare being broken. And it doesn't have to be this way. So I truly believe that we can opt out of this fiat-based sick care system, separate health insurance from employment, and really empower individuals to take control of their own health. And that's really where the decentralization piece comes in. And also what we're trying to do is reintroduce market forces into healthcare. So a consumerism element. I don't know if some of you are living in other countries and you may not also see the price because the government you know, is paying for it or it's coming out of your taxes. But even in the US, despite price transparency laws, it's very difficult to even know what the price of a particular procedure is gonna be. And to flip it and how Bitcoin relates, at least today, I think is a store of value and then moving forward as medium of exchange, is really to be able to save Bitcoin for future healthcare needs. And I'd like you to pause for a second and just take a deep breath. And then think about your own health, your own healthcare experiences, navigating 
for yourself or for a loved one, what was that experience like? And for most people in the U.S., it's a pretty awful experience. <laughs> and you know, health insurance is a top, and pharma are top five hated industries in the U.S. And we know that it's just not a very consumer-friendly experience. It's more B2B. So I believe in a crowd health, we think that Bitcoin fixes healthcare. So just like with Bitcoin, you have a sovereign individual, you can send value to a peer without permission, without the need of a third party, without a bank, right? No counterparty risk, the beauty of Bitcoin. In healthcare, we have this triangle here between the consumer, the physician, and health insurance. And generally how health insurance works is risk is in the middle and you end up with different perverse incentives because the one who's consuming care isn't actually paying for it. With crowd health, we're aiming to reestablish that connection between an individual and the doctor, paying in cash, eventually in Bitcoin, and really fix healthcare and restore the incentives so that it's health-based individuals taking control of their health instead of fee-for-service, where you're incentivized to do more and more and more, supplier-induced demand. You have docs doing maybe more procedures than they need because you know, insurance is paying for it. But then having insurance come back and deny a quarter of claims, right? And waiting two to three months to get paid for the services that they're providing. You know, that isn't how it works in, in most industries. So with Crowd Health, we're taking a freedom based, decentralized approach to healthcare. So without getting into too many details about the traditional way, you know, you have insurance, you have your monthly premium, deductible you have to hit before insurance kicks in. A copay, coinsurance, certain set of docs that you can or can't go to depending on your plan. In our new way, you're contributing monthly into your own account and saving some of that money in Bitcoin. We're shopping around consumerism aspect with value-based care and voluntarily healthcare crowdfunding. And I'll get into the crowdfunding mechanism. But really, we believe this new way aligns incentives and building parallel systems for Bitcoiners and others who want to take control of their health to navigate the healthcare system. So with the crowd health model, we're not insurance. And actually that gives us an advantage in a lot of ways because we avoid a lot of the regulatory and government hurdles that are in place that other healthcare insurance startups have really run into. And instead of the insurance company takes their profit based on for every 100 in premiums they bring in, they have to spend 85 on medical care. Their profit is capped. So that leads incentives for prices, premiums to go up. The only way for their bottom line to grow is for top line to grow. At Crowd Health, it's a monthly subscription, right? $175 a month, 40 per month goes to Crowd Health. That's our revenue. The other 135 you're saving in a Crowd Fund account. Now that account is used to help pay for other people's medical expenses. So if you have a health event that comes up, say it's a broken arm, the imaging, the surgery, any PT follow-up, you pay the first $500 of the health event. We'll go out to the community and say it's $5,000. We'll go out and ask 100 people if they'll contribute $45 to your health event. Now they can say yes or no each time, but you get a generosity score based on your track record of giving. So there's this incentive to give and really going back, you know, in human history for thousands of years, humans helped each other, right, when we got sick. So we're, as Andy's been saying a lot recently, we're bringing humanity back into healthcare and feeling good. And we actually have members who, you know, we'll ask for 45, they say, can I give more? You know, we had a miscarriage recently. Can I give more to this? You know, and creating really that community aspect. The Bitcoin piece is that after four months, Bitcoin crowd members will save 75% of their contribution each month in Bitcoin. So we partnered with Swan to bring this to fruition over the last few months and really excited about that partnership and being able to onboard a lot of Bitcoiners. And now truly, instead of paying health insurance premiums, we're stacking SATs for future healthcare needs. We're bringing freedom in. You can choose any doctor that you want to go to or we'll help you navigate your health event. And easy payment, again, so you were responsible for the first $500, and then above that, we're crowdfunding. So more focus on Bitcoin now. What does healthcare look like on a Bitcoin standard? First, it's decentralized. 
We have open access. We're eliminating these third parties and middlemen that are taking a quarter of the $4 trillion a year in the U.S. is administrative expense, and half of that is waste. There's so many middlemen taking their cut. Free market economics, we'll get into a few stories of how we've been able to negotiate bills down for our members. Really a value for value exchange, lower our time preference, proof of work to stay healthy, transparent, aligned incentives, and ultimately having this healthy, sovereign individual. So I'll run through some of these and want to leave plenty of time for questions as well. So the crowdfunding model really is decentralized, right? We were not a centralized risk pool. We're not a, taking the money and going investing it on the side and reaping the benefit. Our members get that upside of the Bitcoin, right? It's your money in your account. And it really is a peer-to-peer -peer platform connecting individuals who share each other's medical expenses. And I mentioned before, but really as humans, we're, we desire that peace of mind. Right? Why would someone buy insurance? Well, you're afraid you're gonna get in a car accident tomorrow, right? But the odds of that happening you know, are relatively low on a day-to-day -day basis. And for thousands of years, humans have rallied together and that's what we want to bring back, these voluntary decisions to support one another in our medical bills. And you can think about it a lot like a proactive GoFundMe, right? And GoFundMe's come and had to fill the gap for the 30 million uninsured and the other 15 million on the exchanges in the U.S. in raising $650 million a year, one in three campaigns on GoFundMe, right? But that's really hard. You have to go out, do all that work on it by yourself, docs, whatever your health issue is, right? And take that public. And only 12% of those campaigns get funded. So far with CrowdHealth, we've, we're right now at 2,000 members, the 12, 1,300 bills over the last year. So far, all of the bills have been crowdfunded. Now again, we can't say that guarantee moving forward, but the track record of the community is very strong that we've been able to you know, start and build this community that are supporting each other. So with Bitcoin, we also talk about open access. And I think not only open access to the network, but learning, going down the rabbit hole, reading, and educating yourself on how to use this tool. Similarly, we want to provide tools that individuals can use to take care of their own health. And what's crazy, even in the US, you have half of the states, you're not allowed to order a lab test for yourself, right? You have to go some, to a doc or get a note you know, there's been this disconnect between understanding our bodies and connecting and whether it's the food industry and the, the pyramid of what's healthy and what's not, or you know, just education in general, people don't understand their own bodies. So now with open access also means how can I connect with a provider when I do need that expertise, right? Or when I do want to talk to a doc. So again, we don't have doctor networks. So usually with insurance, you're pre-contracting all these rates, and that's also what's driving prices higher and higher. And then if you're part of an insurance plan, you're stuck with whatever that price was. No doc networks, 24-7 telemedicine access, so primary care, urgent care, and talk therapy, a care advocate to help you support, discount medications and labs, basically going direct to the source. So it's giving you these different tools, depending on what your need is, you can utilize those. Talked about eliminating third parties. This is one chart. I think you, everyone might know the WTF happened in 1971, but just a massive 3,000% growth in administrators compared to physicians. So we're seeing all these other middlemen taking the cut, and you've got two and a half administrators to every doc in an office because you have 10 insurance companies. You have to have a claim very particular, uh, you know, and just dealing with the, all that overhead becomes really, really burdensome for providers and we actually recently put out a note on on twitter and getting a lot of great support to create this bitcoin doctors advisory board so other docs that are bitcoiners and have been thinking along the bitcoin realm and are also super familiar with their own practice and their own specialty to help accelerate bitcoin adoption in the healthcare field whether eventually it's docs accepting bitcoin for payment because right now how it works is our members are we're facilitating crowdfunding before that big surgery. So the member has the money in their account to pay the provider in cash on the day of the service. But right now, six to 10% of every transaction goes to the billing companies and electronic medical records. You think the 3% of Visa is bad, you know, healthcare is even worse. 
So by eliminating the third party middleman, we have this value for value exchange. So value equals quality over cost, right? And so we want to be able to increase the quality of care while reducing the cost. We're also paying in cash and services today and definitely want to integrate. And it's so awesome to be here with builders in the space that are creating tools to make it easier to onboard merchants, you know, in this case, doctor's offices, to eventually be able to accept Bitcoin and restore that physician-patient relationship. Just a few stories and kind of help you understand the crowd health model and the power that we've seen so far in the last year plus. We had a member in Wisconsin who needed a heart procedure. The local Ascension Hospital was going to charge him 86 grand. They don't even do the procedure that much during the year, right? So quality is fine, but not great. And they have basically a monopoly in that market, right? There's been so much M&A in the U.S. in healthcare that they can kind of charge what they want. We ended up flying the member first class to Oklahoma and got the surgery done for $22,000. Higher quality of care and ultimately up to the member to choose where to go. We had a cardiac ER bill, a scare uh, with a woman who thought she had a heart attack. It was actually more stress related, you know, important to breathe. Uh, but we got that bill down from 27,000 to 3,000. And then with the boating accident, uh, she did not, or she did lose her keys actually. Um, but no, unfortunately had a few, um, had her hands stuck in the boat and, you know, really unfortunate injury. But as she was going to get ser services, she was working closely with our advocate, Jasmine, and we got the bill down to $6,000. And she talked about how great the support was throughout that the doctors heard, learned about crowd health and they ended up joining crowd health as members. So I think that's just to, to say how you're getting a more personalized experience. It's not just a call center in India that you're trying to you know, figure out what doc to go to. So we're here and we're local. So this is also a chart. And as we get into low time preference, you know, what's driven the healthcare price increases? Well, one is the broad money supply, right? And you don't really have price transparency in healthcare or consumer driven habits. So that underlying fiat system has been a huge challenge. But the chart on the left that many might be familiar with, the biggest increase in the last two decades is hospital services, right? So there's a lot of government intervention and regulation and these perverse incentives that we were talking about. And instead of a high time preference insurance approach, now we can have a low time preference approach with Bitcoin, right? There will only ever be 21 million Bitcoin. Our members that are starting to stack sats now, when you really have a healthcare need come up in 10, 20, 30 years down the road, well, here's this value that now I can go and have purchasing power in the future to get the services that I need to live the best life that I possibly can, right? So I think fiat, also if you look at uh, safe uh, books, fiat food, fiat science within uh, the fiat standard book are really telling and understanding of how centralization of those industries as well have a trickle down into the whole medical industry and SAFE actually is a member of Crowd Health now as well, which we're really excited about. Uh, and for me, the Bitcoin standard was, was huge, right? I know for a lot of people that was part of their journey, but I think understanding the history of money also isn't something taught in schools, right? I had a very Keynesian economic undergrad. They didn't mention Austrian economics. They didn't talk about uh, really what, what is money. So when you start questioning these things and applying it to other parts of your life, you know, Medicare is slated to, which is the insurance in the US for 65 plus, they're slated to run out of money in six years, right? And there's 10,000 Americans turning 65 every day. So the, even the current system really isn't sustainable. So we're looking at building a parallel system and that doesn't need to even run on the fiat rails at all, right? We can totally run this on Bitcoin. I think for us, it's also a transition to get there along with you know, our, our members. Proof of work, obviously mining is a huge part and Bitcoin is backed by physical energy, right? And in order to stay well and stay healthy, you also need to expend physical energy. And depending on what you put in your body, that'll determine how you feel and how you move throughout your day. So I think connection between your mind, body, and spirit is really, really important, but it takes work, it takes effort. But now when we remove moral hazard, so if someone thinking others are gonna pay for their services, 
So they may end up not taking themselves, not taking care of themselves as well as they would if they were taking personal responsibility and their community was taking responsibility to ultimately pay these bills and not just think that, oh, this, you know, their big insurance company is going to pay for it. But that's what people have come to expect when you have you know, United Healthcare is the seventh biggest company in the world, right? 80 billion in revenue last quarter. And they're buying up the providers, they're buying up the pharmacy benefits managers. So you see this centralization in healthcare that is troubling. And I think the, also the advice from a public health perspective and policy over the last couple of years and even you know, traveling during COVID and being nomadic the last couple of years, seeing how hard that has been, you know, I think there's general distrust of that advice and people going to sources they actually trust or know and getting good feedback and thinking for themselves, how do I want to live? Transparency, we really want to share you know, where we're at so far, 2,000 members across all 50 states, despite the few that have uh, health insurance tax still, five states still have that requirement in the US. Average age is 36, BMI four points below the national average. So we have a younger, healthier group of people that are opting out right, of this other system. And for those bills, actually bills over $1,000 were 74% negotiated down. And one of those actually includes a case where a member at a $150,000 bill, but because they were from a hospital stay, because they were low income, they qualified for charity care. And that bill actually got reduced to zero. But if they'd been part of an insurance plan, they would have been stuck with a pretty big bill, right? Because a lot of hospitals are nonprofits. They have charity care in their charters. So we're looking at all the bills and saying, you know, 80% of healthcare bills are wrong. So just the first step is doing that work to scrutinize the bill and say, is this even accurate in the first place? and have that support so that you don't have to do that on your own either and take that time. So finally, we're really aligning incentives. I think individuals were taking a personal responsibility for their health care. Again, you get a generosity score, uh, event score, you know, based on your track record of giving and also how good of a, kind of you've been a good consumer. If we find a good, a, a great provider down the street, are you gonna choose the high cost $20,000 provider or the $5,000 provider, right? And it's thinking about uh, what the cost is gonna be as well. Community, supporting each other. And once we hit a thousand Bitcoiners, we'll split off the crowds. So it will really only be Bitcoiners supporting other Bitcoiners. And yeah, I'd love to contribute 50 bucks to another Bitcoin baby, you know, being born into the world. And, you know, for pregnancy, it's split up into three health events, prenatal care, delivery, postpartum, right? So 1500 bucks. We have a lot of uh, individuals choosing home birth, midwives, alternative methods that maybe health insurance also wouldn't pay for. Um, and then, again, negotiating our be the best price and allowing providers to, pr uh, to practice at the top of their license. And that's something that's been taken away. You might have five minutes for, you know, doctors, for the actual, having the doctor in your office. Ultimately, we want to have a community of healthy, sovereign individuals, right? We're taking control of our health. There's this concept also of social determinants of health around our environment, our food, our education, our healthcare. But I think also taking that a step inwards and just saying the individual, right? It takes someone to decide they wanna make an active change in their life. And we really believe that the incentives around crowd health and now not having to throw away $600 a month to premiums, you're saving money, you're able to spend that on services you actually value and take care of your body and think more for the future, right? Lower our time preference as, as a community. So again, really the message being cut out this fear-based health insurance from your life, reevaluate your nutrition, your exercise, and even your relationships, routines. We're gonna be bringing in a lot of educators in December and moving forward with wellness workshops. So we have uh, a midwife, women's health and nutrition and cycle syncing, uh, meditation, nutrition, so really bringing in others to help educate our members to say, here's other information that you may not have heard before. How does this resonate with you and how can you utilize that in your life? But ultimately, it's tools to access and pay for healthcare and experience medical sovereignty. So our message really being stay healthy and stack sats. You know, stay humble and stack sats is a big maxi in, in the Bitcoin world. So stay healthy and stack sats. You can use HODL 
uh, get the first six months at $99 a month. One piece I didn't touch on, right now you just need a US address. We're based in the US. But there's no reason why this model can't work internationally, right? It's crowdfunding. We're not under the insurance jurisdiction. And we have had Bitcoiners reach out from other communities in Turkey and, and other places that want to be a part of this. So we'd love to make that you know, an opportunity in the future and want to hear from you all and connect this weekend or this full week and moving into El Zonte to your, you know, if you think this model could also be relevant for you in, in your country, because I, the more people we have opting out of government or private insurance and saying we want to crowdfund, we want to be a part of this community and stack sats, we'd love to have you. So I'll stop there. I really, really want to thank you for your time. And I think we have a couple minutes for questions before the happy hour and everything. So thanks so much. Yeah, not active in Costa Rica yet, um, but like even there, you know, my wife, we, she had something she needed done while we were there and ended up costing a hundred bucks for like an hour of a doc's time, right? And you just go and you're able to get access to care. So somewhere like Costa Rica, I think the cost generally is a bit lower, you know, for healthcare. So, but this model could definitely work there as well. And you have really good medical care. So you could definitely take a look, I think country by country and understand what is the health system today? What are the challenges people are facing? This is something you don't need to run by governments, right? Like you just said. Yeah. It's just crowdfunded. No, definitely. The main piece on our end is, you know, continuing to get the data and understand as part of the navigation services when we get a health event come up or a request and find a doc. Okay, now let's, you know, understand the, who are the doctors in Costa Rica, right? Or you could say, hey, I have this doc that I want to go to already and let us know. But otherwise, that, those are some of the other services that we provide. Awesome. Well, really appreciate the time. I know Andy sends his regards. He wishes he could have been here, uh, but we'll definitely uh, really grateful that I was able to make it here after 24 hours of travel and a night in Miami too. So uh, thanks so much and yeah, all the best.